Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Megan. You can call me Meg if you want to. And today's video is my June reading wrap up. I ended up reading three books this month and my first audiobook, that being I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Um, that was actually the first book I read um, this month. I didn't rate it because I find it really weird to rate someone's personal memoir and if you don't know Jeanette McCurdy actually narrates the audiobook um so it was really nice to hear her story in her own voice I know not every memoir has the author reading it so that was like a nice touch and I feel like it's appropriate for her to tell her own story especially in this case um as someone whose own mother has passed away, I think Jeanette um, really articulated well the mixed emotions that you have after having a family member pass away. Um, obviously, well not obviously, but my, my relationship with my mother was much better than the relationship that Jeanette had with hers. And in light of all of that has um, come to the surface with regards to Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider and all of that, it was very brave of her, for lack of a better word, to uh, speak about her past traumas because I know that's not a very easy thing to do. Um, and I'm just happy that she is now in a place in her life where she can determine what she wants for herself. Um, that's all I really want to say about this. I highly, highly recommend um, listening to the audiobook if you are looking to read I'm Glad My Mom Died. Um, this was actually the first audiobook I've listened to in a very, very, very long time. I just thought audiobooks weren't really my thing, but since I have Spotify Premium, I got X amount of hours with uh, audiobook listening, so I figured this one was a good one to listen to as my first one, and um, I enjoyed it. I had it going like as I was doing chores and stuff, so I'm definitely gonna look into listening to more audiobooks in the future because I really liked how um, consuming this one um, but I think for like audiobooks I'm gonna stick to like either books I've read already and just want to like reread or more memoirs um, just because I feel like with um, something that's fiction I really want to like hold the book in my hand and see the words on the page. I don't know if anyone else is like that but that's me. Um, the next book that I read is The Little Beach Street Bakery by Jenny Colgan. This is about our main character Polly who after breaking up with her boyfriend and her life kind of imploding she moves to a little uh, town on the Cornish coast where she ends up running a bakery, obviously. Little Beach Street Bakery. And the novel really is just about her getting her life together after it imploded and creating a life for herself on this island where the locals are not so friendly. Um, not many new people come to the island so when she does she is treated with hostility by some of the residents there and so she learns how to weave herself into their uh, town and the culture of that town. I would highly recommend this book or really any Jenny Colgan book if you've ever thought about like moving to a small town and opening up a bookstore or in this case opening up a bakery because it definitely hits on those cozy vibes and um, like the little wanderlust of it all because Obviously, I have no idea what the Cornish Coast is like, but she really um, idealizes it and romanticizes it. So if you are one of those people, I really think you would like Jenny Colgan's books. This is the fourth book of hers that I've read now, and all of her books really have that like cozy, romanticized life in a small town that I think people are really craving for. If you want like um, a cozy read where someone opens up a library. Um, I would say the bookshop on the corner is definitely for you. That also goes by the name um, The Little Shop of Happily Ever After. I think it depends on where you're buying the book. I think in the US it's the little book, the bookshop on the corner, but I think in the UK it's the Little Shop of 
happily ever after and those actually is a trilogy it has two companion novels i've read the second one which is also really cute i haven't read the third one yet but i have that same thing with the little b street bakery there's two other books that take place in the same world so i definitely want to pick those up as well but back to little b street bakery i really found myself falling in love with the town and people of polburn polburn it sounds weird from my American accent. Um, just think of it with a thick English accent um, along with Polly. However, I found the pacing of the third, like last third of the book to be really off compared to everything else in the story. The first two thirds of it, it was medium to slow pace you know she's really just going about her day-to-day -day interacting with the people of the town and then you hit the last third and everything just starts happening and once you get used to the pacing of the first two-thirds of it it was off-putting and I think a lot of the plot points that happen in the last third of the novel were unnecessary like there was this whole like side story with Polly's best friend and the best friend's love life that I just think was not necessary and did not need to go into that as much detail as it was gone into um at the end of the book I didn't think it was necessary um it was it was cute but I would have liked that time put into something else um, more relevant to Polly's story. I also found the decisions one certain character made in the last third of the book to not be in line with the character that we had come to know him as and it just again was off-putting. I was like why are you doing this dude when you've acted this way throughout the book the entire time? And maybe I missed it as I was reading up until that point but I don't think there was any foreshadowing as to why he made those decisions really I, it seemed like he was settled into his life as he knew it instead of making the decisions that he did um but I enjoyed it I'm still gonna pick up the next two of them um I have to say with Jenny Colgan books they're like I wouldn't consider them romance books but there is a romantic subplot in them and <laughs> what I've come to find out with her especially is that the first love interest introduced is never the one that the main character ends up with um and I grow really attached to the first one so yeah just a, a little warning going into her books if you choose to. I ended up giving this three out of five stars. And the last book that I read in June was Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lau. Oh, guys, I really, really, really wanted to absolutely love this book, but I ended up being disappointed. I thought this was going to be a five star read for me, but it ended up only being a three star read for me. This takes place in San Francisco in the 1950s and centers around our main character, Lily, who is in her senior year of high school and in senior year she makes a new friend whose name is Kath or Kathleen. Kath really opens Lily's eyes into uh, discovering her sexuality and the subculture of queerness that is in San Francisco in the 1950s um, and it's really about Lily finding herself and making her own way in the world. It should also be noted that Lily is a second generation Chinese American. Her parents immigrated from China when they were um, both young adults. And I really connected to that aspect of the story um, of Lily trying to kind of figure herself out in as a Chinese American. I'm also Chinese. I was adopted at 11 months old from China. Um, and I liked hearing about the Chinese culture that Lily grew up in and the traditions. Um, that part I loved. The part that I think was disappointing to me, unfortunately, was the romance between Lily and Kath that kind of, the story kind of centers around. I didn't find myself um, very invested in the relationship of Lily and Kath. I was more invested in Lily's own self-discovery and Kath was really the catalyst for Lily um, discovering those things about herself. But other than that, I don't think Kath was that much of a compelling character. The only thing about her character that really stood out to me is that she wanted to be a pilot and that she had blonde hair and blue eyes. That's all we really know about her character. I didn't really feel the connection between Kath and Lily um, other than Kath was Lily's like 
I guess, sexual awakening. Although arguments could be made that other people previous to Kath that Lily had seen in like ads and stuff were Lily's sexual awakening. And despite the Telegraph Club being in the title of this novel, a lot of the book takes place outside of the Telegraph Club, which I would have loved to have more of the scenes taking place in the Telegraph Club and really getting to know the patrons of it um, in more detail. That was the most compelling thing about this book. And just overall, I think the pace for this book was just too slow for my personal preferences. I didn't really feel myself being invested into Lily's story um, until the like last 20% of it when um, everything starts to go down and go wrong. And personally, if I was writing this, I would have loved to have more time spent with Lily after everything goes down instead of building up to it. Um, there's like a tiny little epilogue with Lily's life a year after everything goes down and I would have loved to see how she adapts to life then instead of again leading up to it. I really wanted to love Late Night at the Telegraph Club but it just fell flat to me and I think that's the most disappointing thing of all. But that is it for this video guys. If you like this video hit the subscribe button down below. Um, you can follow me on all of my social media which is linked in the description box. Other than that I hope you have a wonderful morning, noon, night, or day wherever you are in the world and I will see you in my next video. Bye!